my name is Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. Today we're answering the question, can you use watercolor paints with stencils? They may seem like incompatible mediums, but with a little bit of imagination, a little bit of playing around, we can get some very interesting techniques using stencils and watercolors together. So it's important to realize that when you are using stencils with watercolor paints, it's not going to work the same way as with acrylic paints or mediums. Usually with acrylic paints or mediums, you can just basically add the color through the stencil, pull it off, and you're good to go. And then you can usually get a very vivid image. But for stencils, a little bit of patience and a bit of a looser technique is required to get really good results with stencils. So the easiest way to create very detailed images with watercolor paints is to basically trace your stencil image. So for these feathers here, I took the stencil, I basically traced with a pencil, and because the pencil will basically disappear once you kind of add that paint, it's still there, but it's so subtle you usually don't see it. In this case, I basically added some wet on wet techniques just to add watercolor onto those feathers. And I might actually come back through this and use some ink just to outline some of my feathers just to give them a little bit more contrast. But this one here, I used a four layer stencil uh, to create the peony image. I wanted to leave this partially completed so you could see where I added stencil with a pencil and then where I'm going to end up coloring in with my watercolors. So if you're looking for super detailed images, this is really the best way of getting detailed images with your stencils. But for today, I wanted to take the idea of using stencils in your art journal in a completely different direction. So this page is watercolor paper. It's 200 Strathmore watercolor paper. And I'm just going to spritz the surface with water. And then what you'll notice is this once you spritz the surface with water, if you add a stencil on top, it basically sucks down onto the surface. So you won't have to worry about it moving because it's, so it's basically sealed itself to the surface. And actually, even when I'm trying to move it side to side, it's not moving at all, which is excellent when we're looking to add watercolor on top. So I'm just going to spritz with a little bit more water on top. And then I'm going to take my watercolor brush and I'm going to dab into a little bit of the watercolor paint to my palette. If you happen to have liquid watercolors, this can also work very well for this technique. But because I don't have liquid watercolor in bottles, I tend to just use my palette and just drop color onto the surface. You're not looking to just add a lot of paint, you're just looking to dab a little bit of color onto the surface. This is where you can have a little bit more looseness with this when you just add drops of watercolor paint over adding it with a paintbrush. Now I'm just going to go through and I'm just spritzing some more onto the surface and that's going to make that color move. And if I'm finding that too soft, I like building up layers when I'm doing this type of technique. So I'm going to come in and just add some more and the more water you add, the more you'll notice that the color will play together. And so I'm adding some rose. I've added a little bit of purple lake to this. I've added some cobalt blue. I'm going to add some French ultramarine to this. And again, you can decide if you want to go really crazy with color, or if you want it more muted. This is where when I am using a watercolor brush for this, I try to not really think about placing color down. I just think about just adding it randomly to the surface. Anywhere that I'm just throwing it on works for me. With this one, I'm kind of keeping it on the lighter side, but you don't have to. You can go quite a bit heavier with this and get quite a bit of other color moving. As I'm spritzing the surface, the color is moving a bit. And this is where you can tilt a little bit to get a little bit of color movement if that's what you're looking for. And so I'm going to dive into a few of these areas because I want to have as much mixed color as possible onto the surface. The surface is so watery and so beautiful. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit of salt to the surface. And it's going to create some really interesting marks onto your surface. And I love adding salt techniques. So if it's something you've never tried, give this a try today. Uh, just, I just using table salt straight from my kitchen. I'm just going to do some really neat things to your background. And I use salt techniques a lot in my watercolor. I find it just really inspiring and really, really fun. So I want to show you again this on a different type of paper. I'm using a Dilutions journal for this. So it's actually more of just a coated paper that isn't watercolor paper. I want to show you this so you can see what a completely different 
look for this could be. I'm gonna go quite a bit darker with this one. And I'm using a fairly open stencil for this. Uh, by having ones that are really thin, uh, it's gonna be hard to get some of the watercolor into those spots and you're gonna run into some issues. I'll show you an example a little bit later on of where I did have those types of issues. So you can see you can add some fairly bold colors. You can basically just add a lot of color to a small space by just even letting them touch. They're going to pool like this and just mix together. So that's always a really nice way of just adding like a lot of intense color in a very short period of time onto your page. And it's gonna go in actually with a little bit of the yellow. So I don't want this all to be straight pink and blue, but you need to be a little bit careful because you might get a little bit of mud mixed in here if you're not careful. And so I'm just gonna add spritz. You can see that just by adding in the color and then just adding a lot more color and then adding quite a bit of water. When I'm working in a journal like this, you'll notice that I actually had to adjust my stencil to make it work in the space. And that's something you do need to be aware of. And so sometimes this is where it's kind of nicer to do this just on regular paper and not in your journal. If you have a stencil that you are having a little bit of trouble with it blending in a way that you don't necessarily like. And that's going a little bit muddy, so I'm just taking that color off there. And I'm gonna add in a different color. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of just straight red, which will mix better with the Quinn Magenta. And so you can go with a lot of colors, you can go with just a few colors. But you can see that just by even adding just a few colors, you can get some pretty good color mixes. So the more open stencil you have, the better the technique you're gonna get. And you'll notice that the paper is rippling a little bit as I've added color, but it should be fine. And I'm still going to get a good image. It shows that you can use more than just watercolor paper for this, but with watercolor paper being able to handle so much wet, it's gonna generally give you much better results. For this example, I'm gonna use mixed media paper. And this is a mixed media paper that works quite well with a lot of liquid, but at the same time, it's going to give you a pretty good image. And as I talked about not using a really fine stencil, I'm gonna show you the results you can get with a fine stencil. It requires a lot more pigment and it's just gonna be a little bit harder to get a really fantastic design. So I've added quite a bit of water to this and I'm going to use a different medium. Instead of using watercolors, I'm gonna use uh, Bombay India inks. So you can see the way it's spreading and moving. It doesn't spread very far. And that has to do with the fact that because I am using a very fine stencil, just all of those spots are just going to prevent the ink from moving quite as well. Yellow's not working quite as well because I have uh, not much left in the bottle. I've almost gone through the entire bottle of India ink. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the straight blue and I've added quite a bit of color to the surface. Oh, I think this one's almost done too, actually. I always feel very proud of myself when I actually get through my art supplies because I feel like I've really done a good job to actually use the things that I own. So I'm just gonna come in and just add in a little bit of water. And so now you can see it's starting to spread and it will spread quite a bit. You just have to add quite a bit of water. And because I am using India ink, it's quite vibrant. So you can see it's, it's definitely spreading and moving onto my surface. I'm just gonna move that around a little bit. I have a fair amount of water in there. So you can see it's like, it, as I'm moving it, now it's getting in between all of those spots. But it's a lot more ink. You have to add a lot more ink. You need to add a lot more onto the surface to get a similar result as you would from an open stencil. I'm just gonna finish off this leaf, a touch of blue there, just so that kind of works a bit better with the color, other colors that I have. I'm using a lot of ink here. I don't think you need to use this much. I always find that with the really fine stencils, it's really hard to kind of gauge this nearly as well. So I just kind of accept the fact that I am gonna be using a lot more than maybe what I really need. Just try to get a good effect through the stencil itself. And so I've actually put this on a piece of freezer paper, which is great because now I can actually move this to another surface and let it fully dry. If I pulled this up, you'd lose your entire design. So let's talk about different things that you can use as stencils or masks. This is a piece of scrapbooking paper that I've had for a really long time and uh, I haven't really used it. I'm not a huge fan of the color. It's not a bad color. I just haven't really used it yet. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and use it as part of my design on this piece of mixed media paper. And so you don't necessarily have to always use a stencil. You can really use masks. Like I have some of these masks that I've had for a long time. I'm gonna try doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna add my masks on top and just kind of see how it ends up looking and see if I like where I'm kind of going with this. So again, as always, you need to first spritz the paper and then I'm gonna add my piece of paper on top. And I love that this basically just suctions it to the page. It just makes it so much easier 
when you're trying to do these types of designs. And now I'm going to add in my butterfly and a little bit of my cursive, a little bit more negative space there. So I'm just gonna put that down there. And maybe if you're not too sure if it's sitting down really well, just spritz a little bit more water onto your surface. And that will just make sure that everything is staying where it needs to be. So one thing to be aware of when you add the paper is that you're gonna notice it's gonna buckle a little bit. And that's just pretty normal. It's not really meant for this, but at the same time, you're going to get a really good result. So what other type of ink can you use? I have a bunch of different fountain pen ink and I wanna show you how intense a color you can get from just a tiny bit of fountain pen ink onto your surface. Cause this is meant to be used for writing. I do have a bunch of fountain pens, so I do use these all the time for writing. And if you're interested in fountain pens, I do have a video about fountain pens uh, that I have in the card and in the description below. And so you can see because it's meant to be in a pen and it's meant to be quite dark. The problem with this one is I think it's it's so easy to go crazy with the ink. So I'm just gonna have to play around with this a little bit more because this is like a very, very intense ink color. And so in this case, I'm gonna have to add a lot of water to get things to move. And I kind of went overboard with this, honestly. <laughs> this is not a technique I use very often. I was like, I don't usually use my fountain pen inks for this, but I thought it'd be kind of fun just to try something different. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of this turquoise gold metallic. This one actually has a little bit of gold flake in it. So it's a really fun choice for this type of work. And this one I will show it to you after it's fully dry and we'll, and we'll see how it turns out. I honestly suggest this ink, but I wanted to show you something a little, a little bit differently. And again, by using a pipette, you can end up doing some kind of cool stuff with this. It's, just, it's going to be quite dark just because of the nature of, of the fountain pen ink. You can even see that as the ink is moving and even drying a little bit, it does react differently because it's really not meant for this type of use. I just thought it'd be fun to try and see what I could kind of come up with. And because I have so much ink on there, I'm actually just going to use my watercolor brush and just spritz it and move it across the surface. So you can see by just adding those two colors together, the purple and the green made this beautiful blue. And that's always one wonderful thing about these surfaces is that you can do a lot of variation in color and technique and still have things work out. By using these paper stencils, like this paper stencil is gonna take on all that color as it dries. And what's gonna really be neat about it is you can either use it as part of another page, or you can still continue to use this for doing these types of techniques as a stencil, but there's lots of options and it gives you some options to be able to even just color stuff and color die cuts that you can use in your other projects. So lastly, I wanted to show you what you could do if you wanted to have smaller images or you want small sections of texture, you don't necessarily have to do them all as large backgrounds. Uh, you can also do them this way. Basically what I'm doing here is adding in three stencils onto a background and then gonna add some water on top as well. And that's just to make sure that they stay really nicely. And so the last type of ink I wanted to show you was the Distress Reinkers. These are Distress inks that I have ink pads for and I always get the reinkers. And because I have the reinkers, now I have another way of playing with color and different things that I could do with them. And so we're gonna start by just adding in a little bit of color. So you can see with these Distress ones, they do move quite well. I tend to go a little heavy handed with color and then I go, oh, what was all that white space I was looking for? But if you like doing different little textures, you want to use this for collage, or you just even wanted to use these for cards or, or something else, this is a really nice way of just creating really quick little backgrounds or little textures that you can be adding to your projects. And so I have a lot of these different reinkers, and you can see like a little bit goes a long way. And because this is meant to be reactive with water, I'm finding it works a little bit better for this just because it will move a little bit better because it is meant to move the, the nature of the medium. And so the key with this is if you are using stencils, you need to make sure that you are not using anything that has acrylic in it. If you use something with acrylic in it, as it dries, it's basically gonna stick to the surface and that's the end of that stencil and that's the end of that piece of paper because it is gonna make a bit of a mess. And I went a little dark with that one again. The other thing you can do is if you really don't like where you're going with it, just blot it. You don't have to leave all that color on the surface if you don't like it that way. Add in a bit more color again. And you can see that because I was doing these both all on the same piece of paper, some of the color is seeping over. So you need to be okay with a little bit of color seeping over. If that is not your thing, I would probably do these on individual pieces of paper, but I don't mind the idea that the colors are blending. As we're having this blue 
mix in with the brown. So I have walnut, stain, and salty ocean. Those two colors together are making this really vivid green. So I'm actually gonna add in a little bit more of that brown in there just to see if I can get a bit more of that vivid color that I'm looking for. And I know I've added a lot of water. You don't necessarily have to go as crazy with water, but I wanted a lot of pattern to this. And again, if it's too much, just Feel free to add in your paper towel and just lighten up those areas a little bit. You can always add and subtract as you go to get what you're looking for. And what's really neat about these backgrounds is you can use them as die cuts. You can use them in so many different ways on your project. Because this is kind of doodly, I'm just going to add in touches of other color. See what I can get away with without making mud. <laughs> And that's the key with this is sometimes these really tight stencils, they can be good because the fact that they hold the paint and the color in areas, you can add a lot of colors onto one surface and get away with things you'd probably not be able to get away with if it was a more flowing and open stencil. So you want to let all of these fully dry. You could probably use a heat gun, but I generally just let them air dry. And I usually do this at night and put them on pieces of freezer paper so that I can just leave them overnight and then I come back to them the next day. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, if you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. By liking this video, that helps me share it with more people, and it's a really great way you can support this channel. So thank you so much for your support. So now that these are fully dry, I wanted to show you the different examples and just what results we got with the different mediums. So with watercolor paint and watercolor paper, this one I went a little bit lighter with my colors, and that kind of helps you get those strong edges with a more lighter background. I also ended up adding some salt in some of these places, which gives you this fun blooming and fun texture onto your page. So for this example, this was done on the Dilutions Journal, which has that really smooth paper in it. And this worked out really, really well as well. I ended up using darker watercolor, and you can see the places where it resisted the watercolor and other areas where it seeped underneath. And depending on how much water and how much color you use, you can see you can get a very loose and a very different look to each of these watercolor backgrounds. And no two are ever going to be the same. This was the India ink. So you can see the place where I kind of blobbed on some India ink there went on very strongly. And what I found is when I was trying to remove the stencil, it was starting to stick. So you have to be careful how much you add to this page. This one was a little bit too much water and a little bit too much ink just on one image. And that's why we lose some of the detail in some of these places. And some of that is, I always get a little bit nervous on camera, so I tend to overdo the water and overdo the ink a little bit when I'm presenting. Uh, I wanted to show you an example that I did using another fine stencil in a previous example when I was testing this. So with this one, uh, I ended up getting in the very fine lines there. But you can see that, again, it was a little bit too much ink. I find it's a little bit harder to control the ink and how the water moves on these more detailed images, which is why I like using a slightly more open image. It works a little bit better for this technique. But I just wanted to show you an example of where you could take this. So this is what we get from using fountain pen ink on the page. You can see from this example here that the fountain pen ink goes on very strongly. I should have only used a few drops and then added a lot of water to move it over using as much ink as I did. Because it's so dark, I ended up losing some of the detail. But you can see the little bit of shadowing there. You do see the butterfly. What's really cool about this is, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, is all of that gold shimmer. So that gold shimmer was part of the turquoise ink that I had that has gold in it. And because it had the gold, you can see where it caught the edges and did some really interesting things to it. So I think I would try this again, just go a little bit lighter with the ink. And with this one, this is basically our piece of scrapbooking paper that I've just ended up adding ink onto. And so you could really just cut this out and this would be a beautiful piece on another project. You could you just use the whole page in your journal or you could do something completely different with it. And lastly, I wanna show you how it worked with the diary anchors. I think these are really cool. I like how soft they are. Uh, the ink ended up moving more as it dried. So again, a lot of the areas I had left kind of white ended up with color in them. But I do like the look of this and just how everything seeped together. And just all these little areas in here that were a little bit lighter. And so this one got a little bit obliterated. Again, detailed stencil, I added a little bit too much water and a little bit too much ink. But I think if you just take what I've taught today and just scale it back a little bit, you'll get a really good final result. I wanted to show you another example of this. This is again with that dye ink. 
and it's done on a piece of watercolor paper with a more open stencil. And because I was able to control the ink a little bit more, I was able to get that really nice strong design. And again, these could be cut out. These could also be used as a background. There's a lot of options about where you can use this next in your project. So thanks for joining me today as we've been talking about how to use watercolor paints with stencils. And I know this is a little bit more of an abstract way of using watercolor paints. You can always do more detailed images by just tracing with graphite and just coloring in. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of a different technique and how you can maybe use this with your die cuts, use this just as your backgrounds and be able to just take your watercolor paints and use them in just one more way. And if you have any questions about what I shared today or any comments, just leave a comment below. I love talking with you guys and just hearing about your opinions on what I've shared today and just maybe some of your suggestions or some of the questions you have. So if you are interested in another technique using watercolors, click here. This is a video that I did about stamping with watercolor pens and how to create watery backgrounds and beautiful focal images just using a few materials. So I'll see you in the next video.